What would it take to change the world? Provide food to the hungry and water to the thirsty. Teach children to read and keep them healthy. Shelter families and train a new generation. Give the poor a chance to better themselves. Create a worldwide network of peacemakers and conquer a disease that has killed or crippled millions. Could one person do it? What about 1.2 million? Yeah, my name is Frank Wessel. Tamara DeWell. Gaston Cabat. Ed Jaita. Eu sou Adélia Vilas. Dr. Naresh Goya. Meu nome é Awal Mao. Gary Parrish. Warren Coffin. Lisa Simmons. Eric Kimani. Meu nome é Eduardo. Sim, Aurora. Megan Cachorro. These men and women are changing the world. They're members of Rotary. Professionals and community leaders organized into more than 32,000 clubs worldwide. They volunteer at the local, regional, and international levels and dedicate themselves to a simple motto, service above self. That's what Rotary is all about. Vision to see, faith to believe, and courage to act. So many of us we sit back and we go, gee, I'd really like to help somewhere in the world, but I don't know how to do it. And Rotary gives you all the tools you need. I personalmente tengo... Just the fact that you are a Rotarian opens doors all over the world. For members of Rotary, no project is too big. Working with UNICEF, the World Health Organization, and the CDC, Rotary has immunized more than two billion children against polio and reduced the disease by more than 99% worldwide. With not too many dollars, these uh, Rotarians and, and our partners are doing a tremendous job, very effectively, very efficiently. Rotary has spent more than $500 million on international scholarships and foreign exchange, while its graduate-level programs in conflict resolution train peacemakers from around the world. When I started working for Interpol at the United Nations, I already had the background to understand international relations. For Rotary members, the reward is immense and immediate. Helping others is uh, one of the things that they really enjoy. It makes my day. The salary I receive spiritually is so huge that you cannot put a value on it. Being a Rotarian is almost selfish. Yes, I help people, but I get so much in return. When our world seems senseless and even hopeless, Rotary Club members of all races, colors, and creeds join together to care. Hopefully we can bring some hope and some help uh, emotionally as well as physically. To protect. The job that is to be done can be done. To connect. But no one has a dry eye at the end of these projects because the kids will come back and ask for a picture with their doctor. And to make a difference. It is possible because we are Rotarians. We can do it. We should do it. But even for 1.2 million volunteers, changing the world is no easy task. Learn how you can become involved. It only takes a drop to make a river. And all we have to do is just make sure that we are in the right direction, we are committed to it, and it will get done. Rotary International. Ordinary people working together to accomplish extraordinary things.
Hello, family of Rotary. My name is Stephanie Yurchik. I'm chair of Rotary Works, and I'm also a past Rotary International Director for Zones 33 and 34. I'm delighted that you've joined us for our September seminar on career development strategies. As part of a Zones 33 and 34 program, Rotary Works offers professional and skill development seminars, coaching, connecting, resources, posting and finding job opportunities, and small grants through our Impact Fund. You can always learn more by typing into your browser, rotary.works. Our program today is on the gig economy. What's in it for me? Gigs have been around for a long, long time. Think of the music industry. In the 1920s, gig work referred to jazz musicians who worked when they were offered a gig. Today, especially during COVID, the gig economy is thriving. Researchers have found that many full-time gig workers feel more financially secure than those with traditional jobs. Some of that may be due to the fact that income statistics show that wages for those in the gig economy increased by 33% in 2020. As people look for alternate works, ways to work, many are opting for the gig option. And we're seeing more corporations move to hire gig workers. As you can imagine, almost half of working millennials are choosing the freelance status in some capacity. It may be full-time or it may be for supplementary income. But regardless of your age, even with a college degree, relevant skill training is necessary. As a gig worker, you're an entrepreneur but generally without the upside of an exit plan. Our presenters today are going to help us learn more about what it is and isn't, how it works, the pros and cons, and the future of the gig economy. So let's dive right into this conversation about the gig worker. Our presenters today, Rich, the HR Guy Salon, is an HR professional with experience working with several national companies, and he's also a career transition coach. Claudia Myrtle is a very successful businesswoman who launched her own company and sold it after 33 years. Both are active Rotarians in their districts and have worked tirelessly with our Rotary Works program to provide these informational sessions. Claudia and Rich, take it away. Well, thank you so much, past Rotary International Director Stephanie. Thank you for the introduction. Okay, everybody. So it's time to tune with us to radio station WIIFM. What's in it for me? And let's get started with what you need to know about the gig economy and the gig worker. We have four learning objectives for this session. The first objective, what is it and how does it work? Second, the past and future of the gig economy. What are some advantages and disadvantages? And last, transitioning to a gig worker. So let's start with what is it? Did you know that at one time a gig was a one horse carriage? Yeah, but not so much anymore. Not so much right now. The first known use of the words gig economy wasn't until 2009. And the first known use of gig worker wasn't until 2014. But in 2021, people are entering the gig economy in virtually every single industry. So how does it work? Well, a gig is a piece of work which has a specific beginning and a specific end. And in the gig economy, each piece of work is like a single gig. 
The work is done on a pay-as-you-go basis. So although some have speculated that gig is short for engagement, the real origin of that word is still unknown. Now, can you be a gig worker? Sure you can. Your talents are needed in a lot of places, such as a graphic artist who can come in and develop a branding piece for a company or a technology expert who has a gig with a corporation to work on their equipment, or someone is on leave from a company and you fill in with the skills that you would bring to that job. Are you good at working with your hands? Do you love fixing stuff? Then there are many homes that need your help. Do you love shopping? Someone who can't get out any longer or someone who runs out of time every day need your help? Or do you prefer freelance writing? Well, all these areas, all ages, all income levels, all professions, engineers, human resources, technicians, sales professionals, many, many more. The sky is the limit. Now, I'd like to turn it back over to Rich so he can tell you about the past and the future of the gig economy. Rich? Thanks, Rotarian Claudia. Look, the gig economy benefits workers, benefits business, and benefits the consumers by making work more adaptable to the needs of the moment. Benefits to the employer alone include corporations continuing to use gig workers as a means to control costs. That's a good thing. They put the right talent in place where and when it's needed to get the results. By not employing people full-time and letting them sit at work, doing things that are not critical to the company, the company saves money. Connecting the appropriate talent with the appropriate roles is a competitive advantage to the company. It helps the company grow the business. Organizations can build strategies and programs to access and engage talent wherever the person sits. They often have a wider range of applicants to choose from as they don't have to hire somebody based on where the person lives. Look, companies have to save money to remain in business. And this means cutting costs. Saving money helps increase the likelihood the companies stay in business to provide work for people. What's the future of the gig economy? Nobody can say for certain, but here are some recent facts and projections. Like Claudia said, people are entering the gig economy in virtually every industry. In recent years, that number of gig workers has skyrocketed. In 2017, four short years ago, 34% of the workforce were gig workers, 38% prior to COVID-19. Earlier this year in 2021, 36% was reported. Forbes reported the following projection in 2017 that, that I've seen many, many times. And here's the projection. By 2027, more than half of the U.S. workforce is projected to be performing gig work. Again, six short years from now, it'll be over 50%. It'll be the majority of how work is performed in our great country. Another source projected 60% of the U.S. workforce will be independent by 2027. Numerous projections exist, no question, including a high percentage of companies expecting that gig workers will become an increasing part of their workforce. Now that we understand the current and future state of the gig economy, let's turn it over to Claudia to talk about the advantages and disadvantages the gig economy has on our nation's workers. I'm turning it back to Claudia. Thanks, Rich. So let's talk about the advantages the economy has for gig workers. Freelancers enjoy working from absolutely anywhere. They like that flexibility that's often not even available in other places. It has become an appealing way to make a living for those people who seek those flexible hours. 
gig workers can choose the work that even focuses on their talents and ones that reflects personal interests and personal passions. Some have used their hobby as a way to start a gig search. A gig search based on your hobbies may even be more rewarding and more enjoyable because you're gonna love what you're doing. So gig workers have freedoms that most full-time workers and employees would only dream of. Some of those are setting their own hours, working from home, being their own boss, and the independence that comes from being self-employed. If you can dream it, they can, you can do it, as they say. So go out there, find a need, and fill it. However, there are also some disadvantages which are important in your decision. The loss of standard benefits, such as those that are listed on the slide, and maybe others. Savings plans, matching contributions from the company. Now, there may be others that you may think of as it relates to you and to your situation. So let's see what Rich has to tell us about how to transition to gig work. Rich? Thanks, Claudia. A high quantity of websites were specifically designed at helping workers find gig assignments. You can see them on the slide, and, and they're just some of them. Upwork, Freelancer, Guru, TaskRabbit, TopTal, Fiverr, and FlexJobs. I, again, those are designed to help people in the gig workforce. Converting to a gig worker may resemble moving from an employee to a consultant, or from employee to business owner. Like the millions who have converted to consultant or business owner over the years, people converting to gig workers may have to address some of the following issues. First, where to find healthcare coverage and a retirement plan, such as a 401k. The good news is the healthcare marketplace can help you find suitable healthcare coverage. And you can also have a benefits broker help you with this. You may also qualify for a solo 401k plan to help you put away some money pre-tax for your retirement. A bank or financial advisor can point you in the right direction regarding the solo 401k or other retirement account options. How about income tax, accounting, banking, and insurance? These will be treated differently in comparison to being a W-2 employee of a company. Again, there is plenty of education, plenty of service providers available to assist you. Another major consideration is how much are you gonna charge the company for your services? Taking into consideration that you will likely be paying what you would normally be and an employer's portion of taxes and healthcare benefits don't go cheap. Do not undercut your pay rate proposal. Do not simply take your past salary and divide it by 2,080 hours to come up with a suggested pay rate. You are a subject matter expert and companies will pay handsomely for your services. It may take you 500 hours in a year due to your expertise to do better work than a company employee being paid for 2,080 hours. Again, when it comes to negotiating the price for your services, don't go cheap. There's, always mar there's also marketing and branding of your services to prospective companies. Do you need your own website? Do you need to utilize social media or both? This is important since you need to portray yourself as the subject matter expert and also how you are unique. Prospective companies need to know that. Uh, by the way, pl please don't brand yourself as Rich the HR guy. That one's already taken, sorry. Uh, now, if you wanna use the color orange, hey, knock yourself out. Again, here's the good news. Local, state, and federal government sectors, private service providers, and fellow Rotarians are available to assist you. You'll likely find some free services and you may opt to pay for some specific services. You may find the insights and information with your own, within your own Rotary Club. And if not, 
members of other local clubs or members of this Rotary Works project team, we are available to help you. Look, the gig economy was a necessity for many people 20 years ago, enabling them to enjoy a 40 hour per week career. Today, having multiple part-time jobs or gigs is a choice for many workers. They enjoy the variety this brings their life. Again, for many workers, the gig economy has moved from being a necessity to being a choice. I'm turning it back to Claudia. Thanks, Rich. So when we started off, we had four learning objectives. What is it? How does it work? The past and future of the gig economy, the advantages, the disadvantages, and then transitioning to gig work. We hit some of the highlights and perhaps gave you a better idea of how gig work would apply to you. Rich and I hope that you've learned more about the gig economy and the gig worker from this presentation. And with this information, ask yourself how the gig economy can contribute to your career fulfillment. We hope that you plan to give it a chance. Now, here are the email addresses you can use to contact us if you need any further information. Thank you so much. Rich and I have enjoyed this session and we certainly appreciate your participation. Now go change your world. Now, Marcy, are there any questions from the group? Yes, there are a few questions. Um, the first question, which could be for either one of you is, would it be helpful to go to the local community college to pick up specific skills or should we depend upon the company to train? Um, I, I can I can take a step. Um, I would never advocate leaving uh, your employer or your service company, uh, leaving your development in their hands. Uh, your development, which is your knowledge, your skills, um, it, it's on you. So if you can provide, obtain training out there at the local community college or, or other organization, uh, I suggest you grab it. Don't wait for your employer to come to you. It's my advice. I agree. Um, I'd like to have a follow-up question to that, which is, are, is there a particular skill set or sets um, that you find would be most useful in this new gig world? Well, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Claudia. I would suggest, uh, first of all, passions or interests, maybe even hobbies, as we spoke about earlier. Um, start off with something you're really going to be able to get into and that will make you happy and make the customer happy as well. Anything else you'd like to uh, You'd be say? surprised. I, I think okay. you'd, you'd, be, you'd be surprised at the different types of work. I mean, we all think of the creative type, the writers, the graphic designers, and then you got the technical. There's a ton of IT contractors out there doing gig work, but it, it would amaze you at what companies would consider hiring a gig worker, hire somebody for 100, 200, 300, 400 hours of high quality work versus giving it to somebody, giving it to an employee and watch them occupy 2,080 hours uh, of work. <clears throat> some being critical and some being not so critical. The sky's the limit, as we said. Yep. So there was, uh, you, did lo uh, you did identify some special sites where gig workers can sign up for updates on available jobs. Would you like to repeat those for our audience, if you recall? Sure, sure, I, I can get back to the slide, but glad to, um, just about there. Um, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Apologize for the delay. Um, sure, Upwork, Freelancer, Guru, TaskRabbit, TopTal, Fiverr, and FlexJobs. FlexJobs is the one I probably hear most about. 
And, and I'm just curious because I'll ask this question. It, do you, is there, um, are all of these, these are all gig jobs, but are they, do they cater to any particular type of, of uh, specialty? So if you're a writer, would you tend to go to one of these sites versus another? If you are an IT, would you focus or are they just across the board? Good question. Not the, my response, not that I'm aware of. I, I think they're all designed for people who they're, they're not seeking regular W-2 employment. They want to use their expertise okay. for specific projects. So we have a question here about if somebody starts to be, to do gig work, do they need an LLC? Is there any benefit in that? They may need to, they may, they may need to, they may need to. Uh, my advice, consult uh, an accounting, a tax professional um, to get that advice. Describe the work you're going to be doing and, and seek, their, seek their guidance. There's also, of course, advice, uh, advice from our government. Um, I've not hesitated to call the state or the federal government. Sorry about the thunder overhead. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there's plenty, there's plenty of information available. Describe your situation to the professionals and they'll advise you accordingly. Um, is a gig easier to get if you're already working? Kind of like it's easier to get a job when you have a job. I have not seen any, I have not seen any proof on that one, one way or another. How about you, Claudia? I have not. Um, I have seen people uh, try gig work while they're still employed and the gig work is nothing like what they are doing now. And I've also heard of people who are going into a, a pretty similar business and have been very successful at it. Great. Here's a question on would a federal ID number be needed as, as being self-employed? My I advice, think- again, consult, consult an accountant, a tax professional as to the use of your social security number or creating an EIN, employee identification number. It really is going to be situational. I believe that's what they would tell you. Right. Um, do you know if the SBA, so a little bit earlier in the comments, there was small business Uh, Yolanda shared that small business development centers in your area are great resources. And uh, Jessica has asked, do you know if the SBA offer a course on gig? Um, I do not know. Yeah, it's it's been my experience. The small business administration is, it doesn't surround employment. Uh, It really surrounds helping companies form, form businesses. Uh, in my in my in my experience, largely in the way of funding funding them, but it's been business startups and companies wanting to continue uh, continue funding bus- fun- existing businesses. Great. Um, so one of the things that you noted is that if uh, as a gig worker you don't necessarily get medical health care and coverage, but if if I'm not retired and I still need things like medical coverage, and I need to think about planning for retirement other than talking to uh, my financial planner, where would I go to look for things like, you know, like medical coverage? Because I've only been working for large organizations that provide my insurance. Well, your accountant would probably know your situation the best, Uh, your financial advisor, Mm -hmm. certainly. Uh, those, those people would be the ones, your legal counsel would be the ones to let you know how to take advantage of the most situations that you possibly could. It is possible to get your own insurance as a single employer, uh, employee, uh, employer, sorry. Sure. And there are consultants out there for that, I think. I'm glad um, you brought up the thing, the medical insurance, Mar- Marcy, because when people consider going from, you know, standard employee to gig worker, they or the first thing, oh my gosh, I'm gonna I'm gonna lose my entire healthcare policy. You know, well, in, in reality, yeah, you're gonna lose the policy. You're gonna lose the, the coverage that you enjoyed previously. However, it's typically a shared cost between employee 
an employer. I'll give you an example. I had an employer once who only paid for 50% of the healthcare premiums. I paid the other half through, through payroll deductions. And it's not uncommon to find, you know, someone paying 30 to 40% of the entire premium through payroll deductions. So you're saying, wow, I just lost this 100% of this policy premium, probably not accurate. You may have lost 50, 60, maybe 70% of the premium. So you're not completely starting from scratch financially. So here's a very interesting question. Um, Donna says that she has talked to a lot of young people these days, uh, some of whom are looking to get out of the gig economy and to become regular employees. So how would you address this? She's been hearing this over the past two years, which is also kind of an interesting time frame given the fact that so many folks have gone to gig work in during the pandemic. I got a great response. You go to rotary.works. First thing I would do if I was going back into the job market, I would review every single recording that we've made going back to last December because it's on marketing, branding, uh, LinkedIn, LinkedIn. We have just explored a plethora of job seeking skills. So that's a good starting point. And uh, if you need help, our Rotary Works coaches. Are, are thrilled to help you. And that's free to all Rotarians and Rotaractors. If so they're I, going into the, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. If they're going into the business sector, they might want to re-examine why they're leaving where they are now. Has their passion disappeared? Are they tired of the work? Have, are, what, why do they want to leave? And be careful not to go back into the same situation if you're leaving for a reason other than I want to do something else. So um, let them take a look at what it is they really want to do now. What, what do they want? How do they want to be fulfilled in their job? And take that route. Um, I just want to point out that there are some great uh, suggestions in the chat box from people who are out there doing it uh, right now, whether they're in gig work or they, they've uh, set up their own LLC uh, or, you know, when you need an EIN. So I would encourage you to just to make sure all of you to look through that. Um, but at this point, I'm going to thank Claudia and Rich for your great responses and your on the toes thinking. Uh, and I'm going to turn it back over to our host, Stephanie. Thanks, Marcy. And thank you, Rich and Claudia, for a very insightful presentation. I hope that everybody on today's call has been able to take away at least one useful idea about how you might fit into this gig economy. I would also like to thank our behind the scenes tech support who always make this magic happen. Terry Weaver from District 7750 and Marcy Olam from District 6990. I'd like to remind you that the Rotary Works Career Coaching Program is available to any Rotarian or Rotaractor, as Rich mentioned, who would like more individualized mentoring. If you think having a one-on-one -on -one coach would be helpful for your career transition, or if you would like to volunteer as a coach, visit rotary.works and look for the links in the right-hand column. Our impact fund is designed to support Rotarians and Rotaractors with a small grant that will ease concerns during unanticipated career transitions. If you'd like to donate, please reach out to me. Any amount is appreciated. Some of our past professional career seminars have been repackaged for use as club programs. If you have found these sessions to be interesting and useful, why not suggest to your club's program chair or your club president that one or more of them may be great to use at an upcoming meeting of your club? Rotary.works is the place to find out more. And finally, 
you're invited to get involved in our initiative. If you're interested, reach out to me or any member of our Rotary Works team. Look for our October 13th presentation on personal branding, why should I care? Please note that this seminar will be at a new time. We'll be holding it at 5.30 p.m. Eastern time. Thank you for joining us today, and we do look forward to seeing you in October. Remember, Rotary works. <laughs>